Hello, everyone. In this session, we're going to talk about some wireless threats that you might, that you might encounter uh, in your work life and everyday life. So the first thing that we want to talk about is called a rogue access point. A rogue access point is any piece of unauthorized hardware that might get installed by an attacker on your corporate or private network. <clears throat> Rogue access points uh, can be quite dangerous because they allow unauthorized individuals to connect to the network and, uh, and enable man-in-the-middle attacks. Now, what a man-in-the-middle attack is, is basically it's just someone sitting in between you and the remote computer that you're talking to, that, you're, that your computer is talking to, and they monitor that. And that's at its most basic. That is a man-in-the-middle attack. <clears throat> so if someone is able to penetrate the physical security of your facility, an attacker is able to do this, then something that they might do is install a rogue access point. This is a hardware wireless access point. And the reason that these are so pernicious is because they're not easily detected, especially if you don't have good inventories. Because having a good inventory of what's on your network and knowing what's on your network and, and having good uh, current network maps and having ongoing uh, continuous monitoring systems in place and things like that will make detecting rogue access points almost impossible unless you just happen to see it. However, all these things that I was just talking about, inventories, having continuous monitoring, having good network maps, uh, this will help you prevent these types of access points. <clears> the <throat> next type of wireless access point that you should be on the lookout for is called an evil twin. Now there are two types of evil twin attacks. Uh, the other one is a social networking attack and we're gonna talk about that in another session. Uh, now an evil twin wireless access point, this is a wireless access point that tries to trick you into thinking that it is the legitimate wireless access point. So looking at our slide, you see we've got uh, our legitimate access point, which is DVTech01, and then our evil twin is uh, DVTech0 bang. <clears throat> so this is how an attacker might try to trick someone into attaching to their uh, evil twin access point. And that way they can gather all the information and they can see everything that you do over the internet. Uh, another very common place where an evil twin might show up might be on public, uh, public, public unencrypted access points at places like libraries or Starbucks or some other <clears throat> restaurant or something like that. For example, at Starbucks, uh, you might see the, the wireless network might be just Starbucks, right? Starbucks customer network or whatever they call it. Uh, so an attacker might set up an evil twin and call it STR bucks uh, or maybe ST with the star R bucks, you know, something like that. And they're going to name it something similar, very close to what the legitimate access point is to try to trick you into attaching to it. So if you do attach to this evil twin access point, just like with the rogue access point, uh, the attacker is then going to be able to see everything that you're doing on the internet. There, any, any personal information, any credit cards, any passwords, anything like that that you send across this wireless network, then the attacker is going to be able to see that and capture it and then use it later. Which is another reason why even if you are attached to a legitimate, open, public wireless access point, you should always use a VPN. So if you do accidentally get tricked into attaching to an evil twin, if you use a VPN, then your information will be encrypted and it will be safe and the attacker won't be able to use it. So that's a rogue access point, evil twin access point. They're very similar in what they do, uh, at least in their purpose, uh, but not necessarily in where they get placed, which, so, which is why they are named different things. Then there is jamming. Now, we know that wireless networks and Bluetooth, as a matter of fact, which we're going to talk about in just a moment, are nothing more than radio waves. And we know from movies that it's really easy to jam radio waves, right? At least in the movies, it's really easy. It's like, jam his signals. Well, an attacker may get someplace like, for example, in a Starbucks, again, where there's, where there's public open Wi-Fi 
access and they may jam the signals which could cause them to try to force you onto their evil twin access point, for example. <clears throat> now, some things in your home that can cause jamming or interference, uh, your neighbor's wireless access points. I'm sure if you've uh, ever pulled up uh, your, your Wi-Fi on your phone, for example, or even on your computer, you see just a long list of, of very similarly named wireless access points. Uh, these are all from the same internet provider. So these could conceivably cause interference or jamming on your wireless network. Whereas when you get into a, uh, or also in the home, uh, wireless phones. Uh, now I'm not talking about mobile phones, I mean wireless phones that you, that you have in the home. These, these generally function on the 2.4 gigahertz uh, band, band and older Wi-Fi. Actually, some Wi-Fi that's still in use they also functions on 2.4 gigahertz bands. And when you pick up that wi that wireless phone or cordless phone, I should say, and you activate it, that can interfere or jam your wireless signal. Also, if you place your wireless access point in your home too close to your microwave, that can cause interference as well and can knock out your wireless signal. Uh, jamming can also be used uh, in, in what's called a sinkhole attack. And we're gonna talk about that in another session, but not, but uh, if someone is attempting a sinkhole attack against a corporation, for example, then they could use jamming to force uh, employees to connect to their rogue access point. So anyway, so that's jamming. So jamming can be used to force users onto rogue access points or evil twins or some other uh, access point that an attacker has set up. So now let's talk about Bluetooth. So there's two types of Bluetooth attacks that we can be vulnerable to. Now, the easy, easiest way to mitigate these types of attack is to simply not use Bluetooth. Don't have it turned on when you're not using it. Unless you're using your Bluetooth headset, for example, don't turn on Bluetooth on your wire on your mobile phone, then you will not be be vulnerable to these types of attacks. However, <clears throat> one type of attack, which is a pushing attack, right? So think of it, it's 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 an attacker pushing things towards you. Right? This is a wireless attack, and the attacker is going to send uh, unwanted uh, content. They might send messages or photos or URLs that they want to try to trick you into uh, into uh, clicking on your mobile phone. <clears throat> don't do it, just don't do it. It's because a lot of times, uh, now most, most mobile phones today, Android, iOS, they're very secure and they're not really all that vulnerable to, to blue jacking attacks. But if you have a mobile phone that you have jailbroken, for example, that is going to be much, much more vulnerable to, blue, to a blue jacking attack. Now, the Really, the maximum effective range of modern Bluetooth is about 30 meters. Uh, now, there are some implementations where you, you might be able to use it a little bit further away, but really more than about 30 meters, which is about 100 feet, and the Bluetooth just really becomes ineffective. So this is a close range attack. Uh, so if you, if you think that you might be victim, if you see something pop up on your phone that you're not really like what is that uh and you think it might be a blue jacking attempt the attacker is going to be very close by they're going to be within 100 feet and then the next one is blue snarfing blue snarfing is a pulling attack right it's it's pulling the data off of your device so if for example, the attacker is able to gain access to your device, maybe your jailbroken mobile phone, or maybe your laptop, maybe you've got Bluetooth turned on on your laptop, and you just clicked OK on a pairing attempt, which you should never do. Uh, so then your attacker has access to your file system. And then what they're going to do is they're going to start trying to pull data off of your file system. So this is called blue snarfing. So the thing to remember is uh, blue jacking is a pushing attack. They're trying to gain access to your device. They might send you a pairing request or they might send you uh, some sort of, of image or URL or something like that. And then if they are able to gain access to your device, then they may pull a blue snarfing attack on you, which is pulling your data off of your device. 
And that is our session. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. And uh, I will see you again on the next session.